But Subtifor, he uh, was able to lead the enemy to think he was socially engaged doing something else. And I've no doubt when he went to Sean Alexandra to, to play golf, that information was in Italy within about five minutes. But at night, Cunningham slipped back on board and led the British fleet out to sea, to the precise spot where the Italian ships were gathered. The ruse worked. Cunningham caught the Italians completely off guard. That night, the Italians lost nearly 3,000 men, the cream of their navy. It was the first major coup for Bletchley Park. The Navy does it again. Here is the British Mediterranean fleet, preparing for what proved to be the greatest naval engagement so far fought in this war. The Battle of Matapan is one more proof that Britain is the unchallenged ruler of the Mediterranean waves. The Navy were the heroes of the Battle of Matapan. Bletchley Park was, of course, never mentioned, but the Codebreakers had their own reward. Then. Cunningham himself came. It was the first thing he wanted to do when he came was um, to see the actual message that, that, it, that had uh, been broken. And he was very nice and we had a drink. And uh, we were in this little cottage and the wa walls had just been whitewashed. Now this will show, show you how sort of silly and young and giggly we were. But we thought it would be jolly nice if we could get talk to Admiral Cunningham and to get him to lean against the wet white wash and go away with a white stern. So that's what we did. So, I, I, you know, um, it's rather terrible, isn't it? That, uh, you know, on the one hand, everything so, seems to be so very uh, organised and um, these silly young things are, are wanting to snare the Admiral. But their joy was to be short-lived. And then disaster struck. The Germans issued a decree, no more double enciphering of the message setting. Just single enciphering. Catastrophe. Suddenly, the Jeffrey sheets didn't work. And so suddenly, darkness fell. Gloom descended not only on Bletchley Park, but on all British cities. For months, relentless bombing had become part of everyday life. The Blitz was a war of blood and nerves. Well, there was one very good remark, is the only good German is a dead one. We felt very, very strongly. Well, they bombed us. They'd, every day, every night, with um, Heinkels and Dorniers, they'd killed a lot of people in London and in the cities. You couldn't have any pity for Germans under those circumstances. What a triumph the life of these battered cities is over the worst that fire and bomb can do. During the grim months of the Blitz, Bletchley Park was one of Churchill's few glimmers of hope. Access to the enemy's innermost secrets could make the difference between victory and defeat. The code breakers were working around the clock to break the enigma. They had divided into huts to attack different parts of the German war machine. Hut 6 was now concentrating on the Air Force Enigma. The Luftwaffe's code, nicknamed Red, soon proved vulnerable. Ironically, the German Air Force thought itself so technologically advanced that it was careless about security. For months, 
Bletchley Park had tried to crack the secret messages from German airfields to their headquarters in Berlin. They had to find a way, and quickly, Hitler was preparing to invade Britain. It was like looking for something in a dark room. One didn't really know what one was looking for. Um, and I thought, and I thought, but I had great confidence. I felt, I'm going to find some way to break it back into the red. John Harrival turned his thoughts to the Enigma operator. There were set procedures to be carried out to prepare each Enigma for that day's messages. The settings of the rotors and the Ringstellung, the alphabet ring around the rotors, were crucial. If the secret instructions were not followed exactly, the security of the whole system would be at risk. But John Harrival discovered that the operators were making a fatal mistake. It became known as the Harrival tip. What the operator should do, of course, is when they've uh, done a setting on a cipher machine, you should always spin the wheels so that it randomizes the position. But the whole of the Herival tip depended on the German operator either being under pressure or lazy and not doing that. The operator had to send the three random letters by Morse to the person at the other end so that both machines would be set to the same start position. But Herival realized that if the operator failed to spin his rotors as he should, then, the three letters he was sending over the airwaves, uncoded, would be the secret ring setting. Instructions were quickly sent out to the Y stations to pay particular attention to the first messages they intercepted each day. That's when the mistake would show up. HUT-6 studied the opening letter groups of the intercepts as fast as they arrived to see if the Herovel tip would work. Sometimes the operator made only a half-hearted attempt to spin the rotors. So LWZ would become LYB, just a click or two away. Or perhaps LUX. But as the code breakers plotted out each letter group, they would begin to see clusters of letters that revealed the original secret setting. Herival's tip was working. At last, they had a way to break Luftwaffe Red. The code breakers could now give the RAF vital information about how the Luftwaffe was organized and what it was planning even if they didn't always know the details. You don't get a message saying, uh, uh, we are going to do the following great things in the next six months, the year signed Hitler. Uh, there's nothing like that at all. You don't get anything on a plate. There's a case of an intercept which consisted entirely of figures, random figures. Someone says, I wonder if they are coordinates on a map, and they all turn out to be airfields. You did, in fact, get from that that they were readying and building up airfields because they were going to concentrate their forces on attacking Britain. Hut 6 broke the Air Force Enigma every day until the end of the war. And they kept discovering new types of careless mistakes by the German operators that gave them away. To avoid interception, the Germans had to disguise each message setting. They thought they had found the perfect solution. Use the Enigma itself to conceal the setting. The operator had already been told to think up three random letters for the initial rotor setting. Now he was told to think up three more and type them into the Enigma. They would be the key for that particular message. And since they were being encoded, they could be transmitted in complete safety. 
on the surface, it looks like a foolproof indicator system.